Welcome to the Inner Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Paul Ryan, and today I want to talk to you about how you can live a life of purpose and not end up dying with regret. There was a book many years ago written by a lady called Bronnie Ware called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. Bronnie was a palliative nurse, so she spent her time caring for those coming to the end of their lives and very close to passing. Over a period of years, she noticed a common theme. She noticed these top five regrets that almost everyone seemed to have. Now today, I just want to talk to you about people's number one regrets, because I think if you address the number one regrets, what it seems to spill over and address all of the other regrets. The number one regret of most people was that they wished they'd lived a life that was true to themselves and not true to the expectations of others. Now let that sink in for a moment. This is the number one regret of dying, that they wished they'd lived true to themselves and not to the expectations of others. Now, when I read this, it really resonated with me because I knew at one time I was very close to being that man. So back in early 2008, I got a call from a friend who was heading over to London to see Tony Robbins unleash the power within. And he asked me if I would like to join them. They were heading over in a couple of weeks time in early February. And I was looking for something at the time I was searching. I actually knew very little about who Tony Robbins was. I knew nothing about what the weekend was about. But my friend recommended the weekend really highly. So I said, what have I got to lose? I'll give it a shot. But I knew I was looking for something. At the time, I was very, very stressed and I was very unhappy. Now, outwardly, I had all the trimmings of success. I had been working very, very hard for years. I'd built a successful business, so I was making good money. I had all the trappings. I lived in a nice house, nice car, great lifestyle, lots of holidays. So everything looked great. And it was great except I was deeply unhappy inside. And I really didn't know why I was unhappy. I just knew I was. And looking back, it's strange that I really didn't know what was going on. But that's the truth. At the time, I just didn't know why I wasn't happy. I remember sitting at my desk one day, my heart pounding in my chest, and wondering if the ambulance would make it to my office in time when I had the heart attack and I dropped if I wondered if the ambulance would make it in time to save my life. That's the level of stress I felt. I remember going to my doctor shortly after that experience and telling him, and he did all the tests and said, Paul, you're absolutely fine. Your heart's in perfect condition. And he said, I can give you some tablets if you want to help settle it down. And I thought, no, I won't take the tablets. Because if there's nothing medically, nothing physically wrong with me, then I knew it was something else. And I had to find out what that something else was. So when the call came to go on the Tony Robbins weekend, I was primed and I was ready to go. But I knew nothing about what the weekend was. Flew over that Friday morning and the event started just after lunch on Friday. And then I realised what I was heading into. I realised that that evening I was going to do firewall. They had pictures of burning coals on the screen, of feet walking across it. And this is what we were going to do. We were heading into a firewalk that evening and I was terrified go well what have I signed up for do I need to just leave go back to hotel and skip this and I thought no you've signed up for this let's just do it so through the afternoon they prepared us very well for what was ahead but I was terrified the thought of walking on hot and burning hot coals absolutely terrified but I did it at nine o'clock that evening I walked along a path of burning coals I overcame my fears and I conquered it and I walked along that path now, what that did for me in that moment was it reduced my fears enormously because obviously, like everyone, we have fears. And it reduced them enormously. Once I left that firework, I just felt invincible. I had a short period of time where I felt absolutely invincible. But that time of invincibility was used very well because the following day, we were taken into a visualization. Now, the visualization had two parts. This was in a darkened room of about 10,000 people with very thematic music playing and Tony Robin talking to us and he knew exactly what he was saying. So the first exercise was a visualization where we were to sink into just how miserable our lives were now. Just think of all the problems we had, all the challenges, 
and really focus on those and really feel those emotionally and physically. And I did that and it wasn't difficult for me because I was hugely stressed at the time. I was having these palpitations. So it wasn't difficult for me to dig into the problems I was having at that point in time. And then he took us through a series of exercises where we looked forward five years and five years later, nothing had changed. In fact, it had only gotten worse. It had compounding. It was now two or three times worse than what it was five years earlier. And whatever stress we felt, it was worse. Whatever situation it was, it was worse. And then he moved us on five years again and five years again. And he kept compounding the misery. People were in the room screaming. It was an amazing experience. But my misery was just compounding and compounding. And eventually I got to 75 years of age in this video. It was shocking. I saw this grey, miserable, old man. I saw this man that I did not want to become. I saw this man that had wasted his life in the achievement of business, in the achievement of wealth, but predominantly in living a life he didn't want to live, in living a life that other people expect him to live, but he didn't want to live. And I got to see that man, and that man was me at 75 years of age, and it was terrifying. You can see why I really resonated with this idea that I would have died with the regret that I had lived a life that was not true to me, but was true to the expectations of others. Now, immediately after that, we were taken into another visualization that followed the same pattern. Except this, we had to imagine our life being everything we wanted. Our life being full of joy and happiness. Whatever it is you wanted your life to be full of. Whatever was your ideal life, that the life you imagined. When I imagined that life, I saw my problems solved. I saw myself living the way I truly wanted to live. Now, I had a big advantage because my fear had been diminished from the firewalk. So I was able to be honest with myself. I was able to take away the, the fears of, oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't be that. I was able to shrink all that and just be honest. This is the life I want to live. And then we did the same thing. We compounded five years, got better and better, expanded more joy, more love, more prosperity, more whatever it was you want in your life. And I took this life to 75 years away. And I saw a man growing old, but happy full of energy, full of life, full of enthusiasm, full of joy, and knowing that he had lived every moment of the life he wanted to live, and he had become the man he was born to become. And I sat there, two visions of myself, and I knew I was at a turning point in my life, because I could see the road I was heading down, and this road was taking me to this miserable grey old man. But I also saw the life, I also saw the man I could become. And in that moment, I made the decision. In that moment, I said, I am not being that man. I am not living that life. I am going to live this life. Now, it seems I was very fortunate to have that experience. Because when we look at Bronnie Ware's book and her experience, what we realize is most people end up on that path of misery. Most people end up on that path of living a life that someone else expects them to live. And they never fully admit or they never take the courage or grasp the opportunity to live the life they want to live. And I could have been that man. And so I resonate with that hugely. You see, discovering the life you were born to live and discovering your purpose is not that difficult. And that's what's needed. That is what's necessary if you are going to come to the end of your life and feel like you've lived on purpose and not have regret. So why do so many people miss it? Well, here's my belief. Picture this. Picture a giant football stadium. I'm sure you've been in one at some stage in your life. So, a giant football stadium, and it's filled with about 100,000 people. But there's only one person standing in the centre of the pitch, and that is you. Now, you are standing in the centre of the pitch, and 100,000 people are shouting at you, and they're telling you how you should feel, how you should think, how you could live, what's good for you. There's, you're continually being bombarded. And this could be from your parents, from your school, your teachers, priests, religion, culture, society, your friends, your family, everyone. Social media, television, radio, newspapers, every external source is continually telling you what you should think, what you should feel, who you should be and how you should live. And that's the football stadium we all grow up on. 
and you're standing in the centre and you're trying to listen to your own voice, but you can't listen to your own voice because it's smothered in the hundred thousand voices around you. That's what you have to do. And that's what people don't do. They don't listen to that voice. But you have to listen to that voice. And that single voice, your inner voice, has to become louder than the 100,000 voices if you're going to live a life that's true to you, a life of purpose. And as you can imagine, standing in a football stadium with all those voices, it's very difficult to hear yourself. It's so easy to be drowned out. And it's very challenging to hear the voice inside of you. Because you've stopped listening to the voice inside of you, you no longer feel like there is a voice inside you and you're no longer hearing. And what you need to do now is you need to start listening and you need to begin to hear the voice inside of you. Because that voice is calling to you continuously. It's calling to you in the things you love. It's calling to you in your passions. It's calling to you in the things you think about all the time, in, in the things you draw to. It's always calling to you. But you're not listening to it. You're listening to everyone else. And the first thing you have to do is start listening. You have to turn inward. You have to take time and you have to start listening. Now, a great way to do that is maybe walking by yourself somewhere where you won't be distracted. Journaling is a wonderful way to do that. You know, I'm a big fan of journaling if you listen to this podcast regularly. And meditation is also wonderful, of course. Anything that gives you quiet time where you turn down all those external voices and you just start listening to yourself. It's very much like we've forgotten who we are. We've forgotten what the inner voice is telling us and we need to remember. But remembering is a practice and you're going to have to start the habit of remembering, the habit of listening. Because the more you listen, the louder the voice will become. And the more you will become clear in your mind and your heart and your soul, this is who I am. This is how I want to live. This is who I want to be. This is my nature. And that may be very different from what everyone in the world is telling you you should be. And just because I say that voice inside and that voice will guide you, that doesn't mean that listening to that voice will be easy. It doesn't mean that what that voice tells you will be easy. You see, the advantage I had when I did the fire walk was my fear had lowered down significantly for that window of time. And had that fear not lowered down, I may have been terrified to admit the life I wanted to live. Because the truth of it is, was shifting to live in that way meant changing the way I was living. It meant changing a lot of things that terrified me. And my, those changes were going to impact on a lot of other people other than me. And a lot of people didn't want me to be different. Because me being who I was was serving a lot of people. So a lot of people may not have wanted me to change. And your family, your friends become used to who you are. They like who you are. Maybe they won't like you if you change. Maybe they won't love you if you change. Maybe you won't be successful if you change. All of these fears are there. And because of these fears, we don't listen to the truth. But I had that opportunity to have my fear diminished. And so I listened to the truth. But that doesn't mean it was easy. Do you know when you read most books and movies, they have a thing called the hero's story. And we're all familiar with the hero's story. So the hero is someone who is given a challenge, but he's reluctant to take on that challenge. In fact, mostly he starts off or she starts off by refusing the challenge, not willing to take on the challenge. Maybe he or she is not willing to accept that they might be capable of delivering on the challenge. But eventually they come around and they accept the challenge. And when they accept the challenge, they find obstacles on the path. And the story, the movie, is then them overcoming the obstacles. And on the way to overcoming those obstacles, they will experience doubt. They will experience fear. They will experience defeat. And usually, as the movie comes to an end, they're usually at a point where defeat is almost inevitable. But they rise from the ashes. They conquer. And they ultimately win. And they achieve the victory. And the victory for you and I is living the life we want to live. But once you discover the life you want to live, you're then entering onto that hero's journey. And the reason I stress this, because I wouldn't want you to think that the moment you discover the life you're going to live, that life is going to be easy. It won't. Life will still present you with challenges, but there will be challenges in the pursuit of the life you want to live, not challenges in the pursuit of a life you never wanted to live in the first place. 
So you will be afraid to listen for that reason. But you must listen or you will end up as one of those people who dies with regret. And I really don't want that for you. So listen. Begin the practice of listening. And that's something that will evolve. That voice will evolve over time. It's a continuous process. It's a never-ending process of listening to yourself. And once you listen to yourself, then you need to take the courage to embark upon your own hero's journey. And once you do that, you are now on the path of a life of fulfillment. And that is the secret to living on purpose. And that is the secret to getting to the end of your days and knowing you have lived a life well lived without regret. So start to listen and take time with yourself to listen and have courage. It's the only way to live if you want to live a fulfilled and meaningful life, a life on purpose. Thanks for listening. This was The Inner Entrepreneur. And I'm Paul Ryan. And if you love this episode, please like, share, subscribe, comment. It all helps the show so much. Thank you very much. Till next time.